Okay, it's Thursday morning and all we're doing today is really just portioning and washing and packing. And I've got my lists here of all the stuff we need. We have five orders, restaurant orders put together. One of them is huge. And then we've got our market stuff. Uh, Mark's washing carrots right now, the stuff we harvested yesterday. Um, we've got a lot. This is from one 50 foot bed. And there's still, is that it after that? I'd say like 130 pounds. 130 pounds from one bed, that's really good. And these are baby carrots too, that's a small, I plant them in seven rows. Um, I went to go put up my hand. <laughs> I don't have enough fingers. But I do, I do seven rows for my first crop and then every crop after that I do five rows for summer. So the, the idea with the first crop is I want a baby carrot at high density that's ready earlier. Whereas in the summer now we can get mature carrots in the same amount of time that I could when I planted them in the spring. So we've got lots there. and. Uh, Everything else we need to harvest today is coming from this plot and that's how we've been doing it recently and it works well. So we go and throughout the week get everything else from all the other plots and then today everything else comes from here. So we'll harvest some bunched herbs from there, some chard if we need it. I already got the spring onions yesterday. I'm going to crop out these two, these two, all these little beds of spinach today because they're starting to flower, you can see. So there won't be much from there, but there'll be something. And then those beds will get turned over. Probably not today, unless we have time for it, but I doubt it. So today's video will be fairly short and simple of just some stuff of us packing and whatnot. And that's kind of what all we're doing today. No deliveries. Um, we've delivered actually, uh, delivered Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, We'll be delivering Friday, and then the market's on Saturday. Mark's gonna do the market this this Saturday. So we're delivering, we've delivered every day except today. So we're, we're, we're pretty much at high season right now. Everything that is avail can be available on the farm is. You know, I'm, I'm behind the greenhouse right now. There's a ton of tomatoes happening. You saw the, the other greenhouses yesterday. So these are, this is the one greenhouse here. This tunnel has five rows in it and each of those two tunnels have three rows, but this tunnel's longer than, than those ones. So this one's got a lot. Just look at the fruit sets on these things, it's nuts. This is that sweet baby girl variety just full actually no this is sakura this is the hybrid i've been growing for years it's more of a plum sized tomato but it's super prolific uh, it's a great tomato because it maintains its flavor throughout the season and, and it stays um the skin stays thin whereas something like the sun gold starts to lose a bit of its flavor into the fall and the skin gets thicker and the tomato gets smaller but it's a really good tomato for early season production these guys And this plot is producing very well. Um, this bed of salin over here, I might get rid of and plant something else. These ones are good for another cut. And our patty pans are going crazy. We have to pick them every day now, so it's kind of routine every morning to come out and pick patty pans. And uh, basil is pumping now. It's already starting to get a little woody. It's almost like it's come in and do its late season. It's okay, basil's not a really big crop for us. It's actually very small. Don't really sell much of it at all. Sell most of it at the farmer's market. And uh, right now I am going to come in here. I'm gonna crop out all these sunflower shoots. I'll save the pea shoots for tomorrow because they're not quite ready. But I'll crop out these sun shoots and I'll save the radish shoots for tomorrow morning as well. These could definitely use another day and then they'll be good.
Okay, as the saying goes, you don't know where you can go until you know where you've been. First thing I need to do today, well, one of the first things, is take stock of what we have. So, just going through our coolers and uh, you know, everything's labeled. There's all the carrots we harvested. So I'm just going through with a list and writing down everything that's in there and then comparing that to what I know we need to fulfill for orders. Okay, we have a situation here. We need another 50 pounds of greens to meet our orders and farmer's market quota for the week. And so right now as we stand, we don't have that in the cooler, so I need to figure out, can I get that? And if I can't, I have to figure out who and what to short. So I'm looking at what, okay, so this is where most of our lettuce is right now. I'm gonna head over to my other downtown plot just two blocks away and check that out and see what's there. But I have to be careful on how I make my move right now because if I, let's just say I go, okay, we need another 50 pounds. Okay, I'll just cut this bed. Right now we're getting a pound a foot. So we'll get, we're getting 50 pounds off a 50 foot bed. I could just cut that. Problem is next week, there's no way that these are gonna be fully ready. These are gonna need another 10 days at least to be mature. And we'll go and look at the other plot and see, but you know, you have to be careful in these situations because if you just go for it and get everything that's available now and then you're short next week, well then what's the point? You might as well spread out that shortage so that you keep your average weekly um, revenue steady and you keep your customers mostly happy opposed to shorting somebody entirely the next week. You're better off to short them a little bit each week so that they might have another supplier they get some stuff from. So that's my general rule of, rule of thumb. So I'm going to go and get some more arugula from this plot at Lawrence and I'm going to see what the lettuce situation is there thinking forward into next week. We can cut this bed of beet greens, maybe that's five pounds and it'll regenerate for next week. So, okay, there's five pounds there. Not really that much. Um, on the flip side, or on the good side of things, I mean, it's all good, because our problem right now is we have more orders than we have product for, so it's all good. But uh, we did really well on our carrot haul. Overall, we got 145 pounds from that one five foot, uh, 50 foot bed. So that's fantastic. We have a little more than we can sell, but no problem, because carrots are generally easy to sell and everything else is really good. We've got lots of everything. So the only thing we're short on right at the moment is a bit of arugula and we're a bit short on salad mix. Otherwise, we're sitting pretty on everything. Okay, so I'm here and um, yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to be short this week. So I've got this one bed of arugula I can cut, but that'll just be sold for arugula because we're short there too. And um, I don't want to cut anything here because then I'm going to be short next week. So basically the strategy is to spread out the shortage and uh, all I'm going to do here is cut that bed of arugula and then head back. All right, so I've also got tomatoes here. Roger and Alain have already picked the tomatoes from here. So looks like maybe 35 pounds or so. I'll take them home, load them on the bike trailer, and weigh them out. But then we've got a big picking at the greenhouse tomorrow at my place. Okay, I wanna show you guys a termination scenario. I'm gonna terminate this crop after I harvest it. Couple reasons. Three reasons. First reason, the first eight feet, even 10 feet, was spotty germination, and it's full of chickweed. Second reason is I've got a um, a weird sort of growth pattern. This sometimes happens with arugula. It's uh, it happens more often in the spring. Don't know why it happened now, but whenever I've seen this before, where it's just it's not growing, it's either because it was overwatered or underwatered. It's hard to say, and. Uh, it doesn't really bounce back from that, just from what I've seen. And again, I don't know the exact reason, but I've seen this before. You got this discoloration in the leaf and um, it's really stunted. So I don't know why again, but um, I don't wanna wait for it because I know it's not gonna grow very well. Third reason is 
it's already going to flower. So it's a one cut wonder this week. This bed will get turned over on Monday. That bed of arugula was a net loss. So I think I pulled maybe 10 pounds out of it. So it's a 50 foot bed, 10 pounds at 10 bucks a pound. Still made a hundred bucks on it. So, I mean, it obviously covered its costs. And um, so just a note on like crop failures. So in my book, I write that on a 25 foot bed in high rotation, you can make about $800 of revenue. That's that's saying that you get four crops out of that bed at an average of $200 per crop. So that's a 50 foot bed. That means that that bed will on average generate $1,600 of revenue for the season. And um, that's still going to be correct, I guarantee you. Uh, when, I, when I came up with those averages, I basically came to I took the average, so that's taking into consideration crop failures, um, successes, and everything. Let that guy pass. And um, so it's not a big deal. The other thing that's, that's very optimistic about when you get crop failures like that is it's summertime right now. That arugula, that was 21 days. That was 21 days from seed to first cut. So it's not that big of a deal that that bed is going to get pulled out and planted to something else immediately because it's only 21 days. We're, we're Right now we're at the halfway point of the season, so we're four months in. We've got another four months left of the main season at that's ending the uh, end of October or early November. So at the end of the day, I'm still going to have at least two more crops in that bed. All right, the day is almost done. We have put most of the orders together. Everything's washed, mostly packed. We're just around the, the main home base here, harvesting the herbs and I'm gonna go and get the spinach. Mark's in the back harvesting right now. I'm gonna spend the last part of the day filming this stuff with the drone, cause why not? Cause it's fun and it's rad, okay. Most of those crops pulled out. I didn't finish it because there's actually no real reason to. We're, we're already ahead. So we've got mostly everything done. So we'll be able to head out for our deliveries early in the morning. And uh, the rest of the day will just be spent doing, maybe finishing those beds and doing odds and ends things. So we'll be, we will be ahead of the game and we're good. So I don't know, I might not even make a video tomorrow because there's probably nothing really that interesting to put in it. It's just us packing for market. And, um, you know, if there's some interesting nuances, I'll put some stuff in there. If not, I might take a day off. I hope that's okay with you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time, whether it's tomorrow or the next day. Okay, see you soon.